In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the infantry painted from the Cadian Combat Patrol box. Welcome to Tabletop Already. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, we're going to get started building and painting the Cadian Combat Patrol, starting with all the troops, command, and weapon teams. Combat patrols are a great way to get started with a new army and it allows me to show you how to paint a variety of things so you can get stuck in and start collecting and painting this faction yourself. In the Cadian Combat Patrol, you get a command squad, 20 Cadian shock troops, the Sentinel, and two Ordnance weapon teams. Combat patrols contain a great variety of miniatures from any given faction. They're also balanced and designed to play against all the other combat patrols as well, which means they're a great way to get started with building painting and playing Warhammer 40,000. For this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint all the infantry that you get in the box so you'll be able to build upon what I show you and continue to add to your collection. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. And if you enjoy my content I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. If you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which will also be linked in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who have made this tutorial possible. And I also want to give a massive thank you and a shout out to Euphoria, Christopher Burnick, Stephen Troughton Smith, Michael Klein, and T. Al, who have recently become supporters or who have donated to the channel. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to showing you how to get everything painted in the Combat Patrol box, and we're going to start with the infantry. And I really want to show you how we can get some amazing looking miniatures no matter if you're new to the hobby or if you've been painting for over 20 years like I have. Through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get the infantry from the Cadian Combat Patrol painted and to make this easier I'll be splitting the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get everything ready for painting and what we can do to make the whole process a lot easier. Whenever we're starting something, it's always worth taking the time to think about how we're going to build our miniatures and what undercoat we want to use to make painting easier. Because we're going to be working on a lot of miniatures at the same time, I don't really want to paint the sub-assemblies as it does become too overwhelming when you have so many different parts to paint. My solution is to keep the head separate to start with while we get the main colours painted. This allows me to still get to most areas pretty easily. I'm also able to keep part of the sprue attached to the heads to give me something to hold on to whilst I paint them. And if you have any plastic shot glasses, these make great painting handles so we don't have to keep handling our miniatures whilst painting. I've also undercoated all our infantry using Wraithbone Spray Undercoat. I've chosen this colour because it's really going to help when it comes to painting all the fatigues. So for this tutorial I am going to be painting all the infantry models at the same time, but this isn't something I would recommend. Instead I would just stick to maybe painting 5-10 to 10 miniatures at a time. Now we have all the infantry built and undercoated, we can get started. I now want to take you through the process of painting Arcadians, the base colours we need to start with and how a wash can help us create some definition. The first thing we're going to do is paint all the fatigues of Arcadians using your shabby bone with a small base brush. And whenever we're painting something it's always a good idea to thin our paints first with an equal amount of water, making it easier to work with. I also like to remove some of the paint on some paper towel first, giving us more control over how much paint we put down. And when you're painting, make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. Once you've finished, you'll see that because we thinned our paint first, it hasn't covered very well. That's okay though because we can repeat the process and paint another layer. 
This gives us a nicer finish without losing any details. Continue to paint layers until you have a solid colour. Just make sure to let each layer dry before painting another one. Thinning our paints and learning how to use them is very important and very fundamental to achieving amazing looking miniatures. So now you know how it's done, we can apply this when we're getting everything painted. I'm now going to show you the different colours we want to get painted before we apply our wash. So once you're done painting the fatigues, we're going to paint Vulcan green and this is for all the armour and headgear Arcadians have. Remember we want to achieve that solid colour which we can then work from. After we've painted the armour, straps and pouches are painted using Rhinox Hide. For all the silver details I'm using Iron Hand Steel. And for any bullets and gold decorations let's use some Retributor armour. Let's now paint any gloves and all the boot coverings with Steel Legion Drab to help separate these details from the straps and pouches. And when you're painting multiple miniatures at the same time, we can do something called batch painting. So rather than painting each individual Cadian until it's finished before we paint the next Cadian, we can paint each colour across the miniatures at the same time. This speeds things up and also helps with consistency. Let's finish up our main colours with the bad and black for the boots and other details we want to be black. Now we've got our main colours done, the next thing to paint is the skin. So I'm now attaching all the heads to our miniatures to make things less complicated. The only head I want to keep separate is the head for the banner bearer, so it doesn't get in the way later. We're now ready to paint the skin, and because the Astra Militar run recruit from all over the galaxy, it's really up to you what colours you want to use, but I will be showing you a couple of examples in this tutorial. For a light skin tone I'm using Kizla Flesh, and for a dark skin tone I'm using Gorthor Brown. With these details painted, I think we're now ready to create some definition. But before we move on, if you're like me and along the way you've made mistakes or have been a bit messy, it's worth taking some time neatening up everything before we move on to the next step. When it came to neatening up the fatigues, I did choose to use more gas bone, as this covers better than your shabti bone does, and you won't really notice once the wash is applied. We've started with painting all these base colours first because we can apply the same wash to them at the same time, creating some definition. Now we've spent some time making sure everything is looking neat and tidy, Arcadians are looking pretty flat, but we can change this using a wash. To make the wash, let's mix an equal amount of Lamy Medium to Agrax Earthshade. This is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't overpower the colours we've already painted. We only want to use enough of the wash to cover the miniatures comfortably to avoid it pulling up in details too much. But if you do find it's pulling up too much in details where you don't want it to, you can remove any excess with your brush. And when the wash is dried you should see how it's helped to bring out all the details of Arcadians, making them look less flat and more interesting. At this point you can just carry on and paint all the base colours on the remaining details and they'll be ready to start playing games with. But if you want to get them fully painted and finished and looking like the ones on the box, then just carry on and follow along with this tutorial. Now we've gotten a lot of our colours painted and created some definition with a wash, I want to show you how to get these details finished and highlighted. There's still a lot to get painted, so let's get the main details like the fatigues, armour and straps finished so we can focus on the smaller details after. The Wash Brigade Arcadians has done a great job to help bring out a lot of the details and provided some different tones and shading as well. But we can go a step further and really help bring out all those details with some highlights. But first let's use some of that Vulcan Green again to neaten up the armour and to reapply a base colour, but only on the raised areas this time leaving the shade still visible around details. This helps to make more of a feature of the armour and give it more of a solid shape ready for highlights. I do want to go into some detail about highlighting as we're going to be doing a lot of it through this tutorial. For me highlighting is one of those skills that's worth practising and worth learning to do well. It teaches us better brush control and improves our hand-eye coordination. I also believe that if we can learn to highlight well then we should be able to paint anything. 
When it comes to highlighting, I like to keep a brush separate so I know it's going to do what I need it to do. We don't want to thin our paints as much either as we would when layering as we won't be painting multiple layers with it. And let's remove some of the paint from our brush on some paper towel as well to give us more control and prevent those thick blobby lines. Let's start off with highlighting all the fatigues with Screaming Skull. The idea is to go around the miniature and paint thin lines on all the raised folds in the cloth and along any edges of the material. And if you're unsure where to paint the lines, just do the obvious places and you'll be fine. And after you're done highlighting 30 guardsmen like I've just done, you should now be an expert. And we can get started on highlighting the armour. For the armour, we're going to be doing two stages of highlighting. And our first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight using Lothurn Forest. This wants to be quite a thick line so we're still able to see it after another stage of highlighting. You want to paint this highlight along all the edges and around any details in the armour. And once you've finished you'll see how it's helped to define a lot of the shapes making them easier to see. The second highlight is an edge highlight using Cree Khaki. And this is a thinner line that is painted within our chunky highlight. To make painting these easier, we can angle our brush and run it along any edges to create the highlight. For any areas we can't do this, just take your time and paint thin lines where you want the highlight. And once both these highlights are done, you should be able to see how much of a difference this has made to the armour. Highlighting does take some time to do and it takes a lot of practice to do it well. But it's always worthwhile and really helps bring out those features and details on our miniatures. To highlight any straps and pouches, let's start with a chunky highlight using Doom Ball Brown. Then we can use Bane Blade Brown for our edge highlight. For all the gloves and boot coverings, use Bane Blade Brown for the chunky highlight. And when you've done that, we can use Ushabti Bone for the edge highlight. The last details I want to show you how to get highlighted are all the black details. And for these, we want to use Ashen Grey as a chunky highlight. And finally, Dawnstone for the thinner highlight. Even though I'm showing you the two stages of highlights for all these details, you can just stick to the thinner highlight and miss out the chunky highlight if you want to. It's up to you. Before we move on to something a bit more fun than highlighting, let me show you how I finish painting the skin. All you really need to do to finish the skin is to use the base colour you started with to highlight and pick out the raised features on the faces. With the skin done we can now move on and get all the weapons painted and see how we can create some of the different weapon effects. I want to use this section of the tutorial to show you how to get all their weapons painted including all their specialist weapons. Let's get all the weapon casings painted first and yes more highlighting. Start with some nocturne green first of all for the base colour. Lothurn Forest is then used for the chunky highlight, before finishing up with an edge highlight using Nurgling Green. After you finish painting the weapon casings, let's neaten up and reapply the base colours on the metals. Let's now move on and see how we can get our special weapons painted and see how we can create some of those cool weapon effects. For any flamers, let's first apply some Agrax Earthshade to the end of the nozzle about two thirds of the way up. Once that's dried, let's use some Norn Oil, but this time only about a third of the way along the nozzle. If you want to create some muzzle burn, Druki Violet is first applied to the end of the mouth of barrel, but only a third of the way. When that's dried, we can apply some Drakenoff Nightshade, carrying on from the Druki Violet. For any plasma guns, start with some Barrow Blue, then paint the ridges using Corax White. Now we've gotten all our different weapons finished, there are only a few things left to paint on our infantry. In this last section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the things that can help you get your Cadians finished, including the banner and getting them based. I've not shown you how to paint all the details you might find on your Cadians in this tutorial, just because there's so much to cover but I do want to finish up showing you some of the things that might help. For any designs and any rank markings, let's use some Corax White. And if you want to create some definition on these details, I've used some Apothecary White. 
Now let me show you how to get your banner painted as it's quite a big feature. For the blue areas use Cantor Blue and for the red areas I've used some Corn Red. Norn Oil was then applied over these two colours. You then want to reapply these base colours but only on the raised folds on the cloth. Highlight the blue with Teclas Blue and Wild Rider Red to highlight the red. For the wing design start with the Corex White, then apply some Apothecary White Contrast. And when that's fully dried finish the wing designs with White Sky to highlight. For the remaining details let's use some more Gas Bone. Now we're going to use your Shabti Bone to layer. Highlight raised details and edges with Screaming Skull. Finally, for the yellow designs in the centre, we can use some Myandan Yellow Contrast over the Morgas Bone. And Screaming Skull is again used for an edge highlight. Now we've got everything painted, let me show you how I've based my Cadians. I first used the Ghrelin Badland. And once this is fully dried, I applied Agrax Surfshade over it. I then brought out the texture on the base using a dry brush with Screaming Skull. Finally, I finished my bases by painting the rims using Steel Legion Drab. I know I've not shown you how to paint every single detail on your Cadians in this tutorial, but with everything I have shown you, you should have no problem getting the inventory part of the Cadian Combat Patrol box painted. So let's see how they turned out. With the Cadian inventory finished, I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own painted. I've got lots of other tutorials on the channel to help get your Astra Militarum painted, so make sure to go check them out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. As well, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.